pull here. So uh, you see Weidinger on your right with Band Company, Boswell on your left with Green White Token. So we'll see how things do shake out here. I don't know Weidinger's tiebreaker slash standing situation going into the round. Boswell was in 16th place, so I would be shocked if he could make top eight with a win. Uh, but that may not necessarily be true of Weidinger. So they'll be working their way into game number three. For the Boz, he said many times here this weekend that he is pretty comfortable with his Bant Company matchup, and we'll see if that will hold true in this third and final game of this matchup, and maybe the third and final game for each of these players today. Make sure our time is right as these players are ready. It is game three with about 27 minutes left. Small miracle. <laughs> Someone probably mulligan to five, game one, and then someone, you know, got land screwed game two, and I, now we got. I didn't think I'd see that. 25 minutes on the clock here for game three. Yeah. Well, here we go. We'll find out who's on the play soon enough. And we're getting ready. I told you. Pretty nice top eight shaping up here. Yep. Give me a lot of fun to watch. And you know what? Green white tokens, not dead yet. No, Eric Rill's in. Yeah. Like I said, I think I think Boswell can't make it if he was 16th place coming into the round, mm -hmm. but also a successful tournament for him nonetheless, win or lose here. I do think the deck needs to make some changes and so on and so forth, but, you know, that deck's got plenty of stuff to adjust with. Right. A lot That's of tools in those two colors. Yeah. And I think the main deck, Tragic Arrogance, for Boswell is pretty brilliant. That is a way to break open all sorts of mid-range creature matchups. Yeah, Eric's got his one in his main deck, and we might actually see more players actually move this direction because you want to talk about a card that is immune to Reflector Mage, immune to Spell Queller, and has a huge impact on the game. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what you're looking for. That five-mana sweet spot. And it's not like Bant Company interacts that well with Ormondal as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can set up lines of Ormondal untapped Tragic Arrogance, assuming you can slow the game down. And the game kind of naturally gets into that place to begin with because it's a bunch of two threes on the ground banging into each other. So with the right, you don't need to play four copies of all of these cards to have them come up in the games because the games go on long enough that you're going to just find it kind of naturally. Chris will take a look at six cards now, see if he can find a hand that he likes. Widinger will scry. It looks like it's going to stay on top. Fortified Village. Reveal Plains. It's an Othanissa here for Boswell. Take a look at the top couple of cards. And he'll get a hanger back walker. So let's head over to Christopher Widinger. A forest and he'll pass. To the Boz. I like that Boswell has been making a lot of effort here to play hand up when appropriate. That is a function of working in coverage. It's true. He respects the craft. It does. Yeah. Not enough to, to not pull right out dive. one of his stupid tiny dice. Yeah. But at least, he's trying, <laughs> at least he's trying to play hand up for the most part. <laughs> he's not perfect. Right. Not perfect. But, but he, is, he is showing some respect for the craft, yeah. which I appreciate. In for one comes Hanger Back Walker. I think we might see a Nissa here. Yes, we do. This is one of those green white starts where you Oath into two drop into Oath of Nissa, and if he's got fourth land plus Gideon, it's a dream. Yep, that's how you draw it up. There's a Prairie Stream. Sylvan Advocate, pass that turn back. Boswell will draw. He's got the fourth land. And I believe Tragic Arrogance in hand with a fifth land as well. Mm -hmm. Very well situated here. He's got an advantage here over the long term in multiple respects. Hangerback, Walker, Nyssa, Westvale, Abbey. Can probably engineer the game into a spot where Tragic Arrogance is the full blowout. A plant token. And now I think it might be Evolutionary Leap. It's actually going to be a noose nope. constriction. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> no. Two mana green card. Yep. Uh, they all kind of look the same. I'm, right. I'm with you there. But At times. Evolutionary leap here would be game over. Yeah. <laughs> noose constrictor, on the other hand, well. <laughs> well, it's big. Well, whatever. Yeah, it's, <laughs> well, it's a thing. I'm a little surprised to see Boswell pretty far away from evolutionary leap this week and just one in the sideboard, none in the main deck. Yep. 
leaping green white tokens is really something. It's possible he thinks the better plan for, if you assume most of the mid range and controlling decks are going to be heavy on creatures, your better plan might just be tragic arrogance, quarantine field, stasis snare, etc. If you get outclassed on the board, even if you've got Evolutionary Leap going, there's no guarantee that you're going to end up ahead, ultimately. And these decks have a lot of card advantage to hang, out, uh, hang around with you, too. So you might just want these huge trumps and big removal spells instead. Another 0-1 plant. And Boswell will pass. Collect a company on the way here from Weinger. We all know that. So top six, we'll see if Chris can take two with him. There's at least a Sylvan Advocate. It looks like there's a Jace there as well, so he's found two. Ochtai's Command, Declaration of Stone, Jamoka's Command, and a land are going to go to the bottom. Winder's going to organize those appropriately. The land is a prairie stream. Interesting to see if Boswell thinks that this Jace is good enough to Jamoka's Command right now. You can tell Boswell doesn't seem to care a whole lot about, you know, the size of creatures on the battlefield. He's happy to play this long game where he's just setting up shop, but Jace Fixing Widinger's hand and eventually getting the flashback collected company, that's something that Boswell has to worry about. And you saw where Boswell actually put the counter. He put the counter on the noose. Oh, yeah. Instead of on the hangerback walker. Oh, that thing's going to be able to attack soon. Okay, big Through snake. Big snake. Put some counters on it with Nyssa. Okay. Get to relive our childhood with wild mongrel. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Nyssa Vasswoods here is going to search up a basic forest, so that will be added to... Christopher Weidinger's hand. The dirty dog, as it was once known. That's what you guys called it? Yeah. Called it the pooch. The dirty dog. Not to be confused with Filthy Cur, which was also a dirty dog, but of a different sort. Oh, Filthy Cur? Yeah. What do you know about Filthy Cur? Uh, I put a lot of enchantments on a Filthy <laughs> Cur <laughs> during my drafting days. It's not the best. Oh, boy. That is also that is heinous. Also, not to be confused with Mad Dog. Now, Mad Dog, Mad Dog, I played in my first day championship. Yeah, Mad Dog Arcane Teachings. That uh, was that was a <laughs> that was a draft strategy. Ever heard of it? Oh yeah. <laughs> At the end of your turn, if Mad Dog didn't attack or come under your control this turn, it's just dead. Well, I really like this this sort of functionality because it's the same thing as you must attack each turn, except you can just forget and, <laughs> <laughs> and then your dog dies. <laughs> and yeah. your dog dies. <laughs> We're going to have a little bit of Jamoka Command back and forth here. Boswell initiated this. We're going to watch Weidinger fight back. Well, he's going to grow his hanger back. Walker will Boswell in response to this Jamoka's Command. So away goes the Jamoka's Command that Boswell played. It'll be countered upon resolution given Christopher's. So some doctors are on the way. But that might not be that bad of a thing. I think maybe Boswell wants some thopters and say, let's go to the skies with this Nyssa. Right, he's got a lot of routes now. He can go to the skies with Nyssa and start putting counters on things. Uh, also, those tokens can be sacrificed to the Westvale Abbey he has. He's got Tragic Arrogance in hand, too, so he can set up, you know, turn Westvale Abbey into Orendal on tap and use the Tragic Arrogance. But Boswell is so far ahead that he doesn't have to do anything really risky right now. He can keep doing this conservative line. He can even try to build up towards an ultimate on Nyssa, gas back up, keep the Nyssa in play, and keep going. The feels world like, is his like, oyster. Feels he's like he's a, in pretty good shape. A lot of really good paths he can take right now. Yeah, feels like he's in pretty good shape. Snake on defense, ready to block. Yep. Ready to eat a flyer. Yep. For some reason, when I see Noose Constrictor, I think of the movie Anaconda. Well, that's because it is a snake. It's that's probably why. It's a terrible movie. Really bad, but a really big snake. Yes. Looks like Nyssa is up to seven. And seven, I believe, is the sweet spot for Nyssa and her ultimate. Minus seven, you gain X life and draw X cards, where X is the number of lands you control. So right now, it'd be six. But the pacing of this game is such that uh, I would not be shocked if Boswell just went up to eight and kept going. Sure. I guess if you're drawing seven, there's a, a reasonable enough chance that you just find another Nyssa, that you don't need to overvalue it that much. Um, but, again, there is no rush. He's at, he's at 20. Got and a good-looking board. And he's got tragic arrogance in hand. He always can reset things if things get a little bit out of control. Yep. Is uh, what is that? That's the piggy. That's the decimator of provinces, yeah. I believe. 
That took me a minute. All right. So when I said he had all the time in the world and that he could just slow roll this disc up, perhaps, <laughs> perhaps I was overstating things. <laughs> so it's when you cast Decimate Other Provinces, creatures you control get plus two, plus two, and gain trample until end of turn. It's also a 7-7 seven, seven trampling haster. So these wow. advocates are large and have trample and vigilance, and the piggy has trample and vigilance. This, this blows up the whole line. This things were looking so good and comfortable and being played at Boswell's pace, but... Not anymore. Imagine if you ever ran in one of those things. Yeah, terrifying. I'm out of here. Little drowsy boar. Yeah, I'm, I'm out of here. I don't want anything to do with that. I'd rather run into a werewolf in Innistrad than this. So this is 7, 12, 16, 22 coming across. We'll have to figure out where it's going. Because I feel like some of it might be going at Nyssa. Yeah, I, I think this is a spot where you're probably going to split up a little bit. You want to get the Nissa off the battlefield so it doesn't go ultimate next turn. You can't attack for lethal exactly. And I'm, I'm not sure how I feel about committing a second creature to the attack there. Yeah, Boswell will just probably let it go then. Yeah, at that point, just let it go. Because Boswell is also taking a huge hit here. Th this is probably just no blocks. I, I guess if, if Boswell is planning on casting Tragic Arrogance, maybe he saves himself some points. Maybe this is your bant company, Mirror Breaker. Well, there are two copies in the sideboard. I, I, th I think either this or Elder Deep Fiend is a reasonable path. This card is kind of bad against Elder Deep Fiend, so I'm not sure if, the, if Elder Deep Fiend is popular, this may not be the way to go. Yeah, sure. Uh, but it looks really good against Green White Tokens right now. Yeah. Looked like Winter had no way to break through the stalemate, and now it, it went from that to Boswell's losing his Planeswalker. This was almost a lethal attack. Mm-hmm. Wonder if Christopher was inspired after opening it up in the pre-release. So he's got the oh, perhaps pre the pre-release foil. Yes, a pre-release strategy. Well, Boswell's got a lot to think about now because this game, well, it did look easy. Yes, and now it's not easy anymore, at all. I have a token generator, a bunch of tokens in play against some non-trampling threats with a Westvale Abbey and a Tragic Arrogance is about as good of a spot as you can really get into. And it went from that to really bad. Now Boswell's got to try to figure out how he wants to block. As the Advocate with the counter, that's coming at Boswell. The rest are going over to the Planeswalker in Nyssa. Weird spot. So Boswell's going to lose Nessa. Looks like just no blocks, period. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I think Boswell is just planning on playing through here. I, I think that he doesn't want to pull the trigger on Tragic Arrogance. He still has Westvale Abbey to try to play to. Oh, he's making a move now. Yep. yep. He says, I'm going Ormondal. And he can just Tragic Arrogance next turn. Yep. Get himself some life right now in the meantime. And I think what this is, is I hope you don't have Reflector Mage. But even if there is Reflector Mage, okay, now I Tragic Arrogance. Game is mostly reset. Things are fairly stable. Uh, Widinger's down to one card in hand, maybe two cards in hand. Okay. So even if he has Reflector Mage, it's not the end of the world. Obviously, Boswell would prefer for him to not have it. Yep. But well, the lines have been drawn. It is just play on. Yep. It is not game over. Widener will draw. See what Widener wants to do here. It looks like Jeff Hoagland won his match this round, so we might see him in top eight this evening. And it looks like Jack Fogel with his take on Bant Company with Elder Deep Fiend. He actually lost to the green-red goggles player we saw earlier. So 
I think, XN3 now? For I yeah, Matthew, Matthew Volts. We'll have to see. Again, the tiebreakers are so crazy in this tournament. Yeah. I don't want to make any predictions. Yeah, but me either. Very well could be seeing him in the top eight. Weidinger is going to show a hand here of Jamoka's command and a gate. Neither of those are good enough to get the job done against Westvale Abbey. So that's going to do it. Christopher Weidinger is going to lose this match. It means Andrew Boswell will win two games to one. Green White Tokens will take care of Bank Company. And for Boswell, he was 16th place going into the round. It's very unlikely that he's able to make top eight, but it's still a really nice tournament for him nonetheless. And more than anything, I think this shows between him and Eric Rill that Green White Tokens, uh, it's not over just yet for that day. Yeah, we're going to have one in the top eight, one in the top 16, and, and, and possible in Boswell's case that we'll have one in the top 16 with a record that would have qualified for the top eight mm -hmm. with better breakers. Uh,